The Real Estate Revolution Radio Show is designed to educate Missoula homeowners and home buyers how to navigate the uncharted waters of the current Western Montana real estate market in an educational, often edgy, and high energy fashion with host Jason Baker. Jason will teach you all the secrets on how to win with real estate, from listing your property to purchasing investments. Jason has you covered. Be sure to check the home of the week, the good news, and current market updates each week. Jason is revolutionizing the real estate experience for over 100 clients a year. Welcome to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker. Jason, happy Sunday to you, my friend. What's new? Oh, my gosh. Somebody shoot me. Yeah? Busy, yeah. huh? Yeah, no, it's good. I am uh, I am busy getting ready to go on a little vacation. Oh, because you need you need some you time. I do need some you, you time. Need, you need to recharge them batteries. I do some you time. I need some me time. That's for sure. <laughs> you need, you need Here, to get it, as far away <laughs> from the irrigation pipe. No, no, that, that's relaxing <laughs> for me. Is, is There's it, nothing better than after, like, five minutes, the, the pipes pressurize you here. And you're like, success. Oh. And then you're like, I might have to do this in like five hours again. No, uh, headed down to Mexico. Super happy about that. We have been so fortunate enough to help 75 families so far this year. And uh, because we give 110%, it would be safe to say, and I think Meredith could agree, we're, we're a little, we're ready for a few days off, are we not? We are. Indeed. Yes, we are indeed. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's crazy out there. Um, it's uh, it's changing, I would say, faster than I have ever seen the market change. It is, by the minute, different. We're seeing throughout our MLS tens of price reductions daily, hundreds in a week or two period. Uh, I'm not analytical whatsoever, but when I look at these things, I'm constantly seeing price reductions. And it's just a sign that we have hit the ceiling on pricing and we have hit the ceiling on affordability. And um, over and over again, we're seeing the price reductions. People who are trying to dip their toe in the market are no longer getting that prize. And it's not going to, and this is, you know, I'm a positive person, there are ways through this. Never before has it been more important to have someone with an actual plan mm-hmm. to get these things sold and that has the experience now. Before the last three years, if you had a heartbeat, you could throw a house on the market and it would sell. Now it's going to take skill again. And I am so excited because for the last eight years, every morning I go, why am I practicing what I'm supposed to say? Why am I practicing what I'm what I need to do today? Why am I doing my goals with my team and they want to beat me like our gray headed stepchild you're, every you're, morning? You're going, like Please, an, you know, like Meredith's like, why are we doing this? Meredith, you're gonna see why we're doing this very soon. <laughs> because you're gonna actually need skills again as a real estate agent. And we haven't needed that per se. Yes, we had to know how to, you know, deal with multiple offers and things like that. But really, even though we do spend over $40,000 a month on staffing and marketing for our sellers and for our buyers, we we may not have needed to do that in that market because like literally if it had a front door, you could walk through, it would sell. Within the last 45 days, that's no longer the case. Our inventory... When we were t- when we first started this, gosh, you we poor thing. How come you're not full of gray hair? Yeah, having to I got deal with some me going on here. I'm sprouting some just thinking. Yeah, about that's it. right. I know. We've been doing it for <laughs> since what January or February. We started. Right? We started in, for, in the first of February. First of and, February. And I believe there was only about yeah. forty or fifty houses in the market. Right? Yeah, there was. Yeah, so in Missoula, there was like twenty nine or thirty single family homes, and right in in, in the whole county, we had between fifty and sixty for sale, including Sealy Lake, which right. we love. And I always say that I wish my wife would buy me a lake house up there. Please. So far. It's not hasn't happened, but it is Santa. Yeah. So, so we looked this morning, Meredith and I did, and it's 200 Mm -hmm. homes. Uh, I mean, imagine that. So, and it's only going to get more and more and more. Now these days on market are going up season though for that, right? Well, it's peak season, but we'll normally see a doubling, not a, not more than a quadrupling. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, So it's, it's one of those things, the more houses. And so why is that? And as we've discussed and anybody, you know, people that have been listening to the show religiously have, you know, have, heard this probably a million times, but for those that haven't yet, the reason simply is when the interest rates went from 2.875, which is where they were, they hovered for a long time, give or take a quarter of a point. And now they're in the mid fives and supposed to go up to sevens or beyond or beyond. Yeah. Or beyond. They just don't know. Yeah. There's some optimists that are saying seven and there's some pessimists that are saying over 10. Holy cow. 
Yeah, so it depends on who you listen to. So, but either way, that's going to mean another six, seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand dollars a month for these buyers. And simply, we have lost already. I would venture to guess thirty to forty percent of our buyer pool, and we're on our way to having lost fifty to sixty percent of our buyer pool. So, are you going to be buying houses for hundreds of thousands of dollars less? I don't know about that. But at the end of the day, we're not seeing these, you know, twenty offers per home. Sometimes, if there's a three hundred thousand dollar home, there are you know something under four hundred, right? right? There'll be still you know, you won one the other day where your buyer won, which, by the way, congratulations. Thank you. 16 offers. 16 offers, 16. and Meredith's buyer won. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Meredith will be teaching the buyer courses here at the Jason Baker <laughs> team going forward. You got it. Yeah, that's right. You got it. You got it. The pay is not that good, though. <laughs> but, yeah, just, yeah. Come on. We'll let you pay. No. So, but but it was it's one of those things where, you know, there's still little pockets of, of that goodness happening. Here, here, here is the good news in that, though. There, there, there used to be 400 homes for sale this time of year. You know, really? just, yep. you know, pre COVID, right? right? So we're still half as much as that, but still 200 is great. So people are like, well, how come my house isn't selling, with, you know, with multiple offers within, uh, you know, two seconds, like they were just three months ago? A uh, simple reason is four times more inventory in the payments are, you know, 500 to $1,000 more for the average buyer, and they simply are priced out of the market. Mm hmm. Yeah. Less less house. Yeah, they they're just yeah. less and less and so, less. So they were getting a four bedroom. Now they're getting a half a bedroom. Right. You know, before you know, it's just something like that. You know, or go, go from four bedroom to tar uh, paper shack real yeah, quick. Uh, five <laughs> acres to a rented lot. You know, so, <laughs> something like that. Right? I'll just I mean, do. I'll just do a garden shed. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's right, dude. I don't know. I'd buy one of those five thousand dollars sheds with a loft and be happy. Yeah, but I'd be divorced probably quickly. You know. Yeah, yeah. You just be you just be eating cereal. Be all way the time. less stressful just, for her. I could just see you just eat cereal. <laughs> I love cereal. Lunch and dude, I love cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> That's my favorite. You know, box. I almost did last night. My daughter eats oh. that like it's going out of style and totally almost did that. Dad, so. stop eating <laughs> cereal. She says it all the time. Oh, You better get to it quick or you ain't getting any of it. <laughs> so, anyway. so what do we got on topic for, for today's show? We're going to be talking to TC. TC. And he owns a uh, he owns a, uh, an awesome uh, inspection company here in town. We're just going to be asking him questions. You know, we, we they're, they're, uh, uh, getting a home inspection is definitely highly recommended. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to ask him some questions kind of from the realtor side, just to understand the process. We're going to ask questions that we think buyers would want to hear and and just talk about some of the common things that he bumps into and how to approach those things, what things they should worry about, what things they shouldn't worry about, and stuff like that. And for sellers, what things you might have to be uh, Yeah, the seller's like, God, I hope they don't ask for one. Yeah, Yeah, right. (laughs) That's kind of how that goes. Okay, cool. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker right after this. Hey, you're thinking about selling your home but not sure where you're going to move? If your home sells faster, then you can find a new one. Hey, Sean Hannity here, and as an active investor, I know all about the stresses of selling a home so you can have the capital to buy your new home. There is a solution. I'm talking about Jason Baker of Rise Realty, Montana. Now, you want to work with an agent that has helped thousands of families buy and sell and understands the market so that no seller has been left without a home. He knows how to cut through all of the talk and to give you accurate information. Now, don't let the best seller's market in decades pass you by. Make the smart move. Get the options to put the most money in your pocket. Look, the only thing more expensive than hiring an expert is hiring an amateur. Don't trust your home to just anyone. I've done the homework. Talk to the agent that I trust for the best advice. Call Jason at 552-4443 online jasonbakerteam.com that's jasonbakerteam.com from listing your property to purchasing investments jason baker has got you covered time for more of the real estate revolution show welcome back to real estate revolution radio with jason baker jason today we are going to be talking uh Home inspections. That's always a, a big deal. Did I just mess up your intro there, buddy? No, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Here at the Real Estate Revolution, we have to do 39 takes. <laughs> when Jason, when Jason, all Jason does is talk the whole entire time. We never get anything done. So anyway. Well, uh, we, we were saying home inspections yeah. is, is a big deal because before we were saying when, when things were so hot yep. and, and, and sellers or buyers weren't necessarily asking for home inspections just because they wanted they wanted to get in that home. They didn't want to make it any difficult any more Red tape they had to cut through. Yeah, uh, but now it's 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 back to being a necessity. Yeah, in order to win, you know, when there's 20 offers uh, on a home, which you know those days are ending very very quickly if they're not gone already, because again it's changing by the minute, like we said before the break. More people are going to be asking for home inspections before in order to win. They were just waiving them, mm-hmm. which I think is like not not smart at all. Like we advise no, all of our buyers. It's, it's, I think Meredith would agree to get a home inspection every single 100%. time. It'd be dumb yeah. not to. So we just so we so we dragged in here. I mean, kicking and screaming, Tim. 
Yeah, okay, he yeah. just stopped Tim's, screaming a, Tim's one of the uh, top home inspectors here in the in the valley or all around. So, Tim, tell us a little the name of your company, who you are, uh, how long you've been in business, and uh, just a little tiny quick blurb, and then we're going to start hammering you with questions. Poor guy, there's two of us. It's two on one. Little tiny, well, that's about it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, my name is Tim Netsley. I'm with Inspect Montana. I've been at it since uh, 2001, so I guess actually last month it was 21 years. Oh, wow. wow. And uh, we've been in Montana since 2009, and we've got multiple inspectors, so that we uh, have been focused through all of this time in nice. uh, trying to meet the tight time frames that you guys have been suffering yeah. as well. So when we order an inspection, everybody, we want it yesterday. Uh-huh. We don't want it tomorrow. Yeah, we right. already want it. We just want it. As soon as we hit the button, we want the damn what you, thing. Right? What do you mean it's not done yet? Yeah, that's right. What's the matter with you? <laughs> yeah. So the Good best time to order an inspection was yesterday. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. I digress. Keep going. But we don't do drive-by inspections. Oh, you don't? <laughs> <laughs> I remember those kinds of loans. The drive-by loans. That's just swing by. It looks good. <laughs> it looks amazing, yeah. Follows yeah. them up, but we don't, do, no, it's we not, don't recommend that. Not a drive-by appraisal, yeah. These sellers love drive-by inspections. Yeah. Sellers love them. Yeah. Sellers love no inspections. Yeah, sellers love no inspections. <laughs> this is true. Um, so. so, you've been in business for 21, coming up on 21 years. Last so, that's great. What made you get into this? Foolhardiness. Fool, yeah. oh, huh. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I want to I, I, I do with realtors every day. Yeah. I, 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 en- I enjoy crawl space. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's, 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 no wonder I go to church. I have to deal with, I have to deal, I have to deal with realtors every day. No, well, this I, might be I, the industry that sent me to church. That's yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, it's the industry that's maybe gained weight, maybe turned my hair completely gray. And, and it makes me, you know, I, you know, you I had to get saved it. in real estate. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Your hair is still on your head. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> True. Yeah, I know there is perspective there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have always, for as long as I can remember, even in high school, was yeah. uh, love and construction, love and real estate. And uh, when you marry the two, you end up in, uh, in inspections yeah. and, you know, helping people out with, uh, with the things they don't know. And we all need a professional in some arena. Yeah. And so that's what we thrive on. It's super important. Um, the, the average sale price being around 530000 in Missoula for now. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a lot of money. All right. I mean, that, it's, still, that, it's still a lot. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And so when you have an inspection, you're making sure that you're not buying into a major issue, or at least you're doing as much due diligence as you can. Nobody has 3D vision. Right. You know, well, our ideal home inspection will save you money yeah. because we'll, we'll find things that are otherwise hidden and that yeah. would cost a whole lot more than the inspection. Costs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So smart. Like, so when a buyer actually offers one and really you should ask for one on every single thing, unless for some reason you do not want, uh, you know, you want to like take that risk and, and, you know, throw it on the wall to see if it'll stick. It's a really good idea. And, and I think what Tim was saying was he's going to find some things in the house that you can potentially negotiate for on the sale price of the home. That's one way that you can do it. So for instance, if we find out that the roof is nearing the end of its life, right? For yes. example, that you saw that. So, the, so, so what is the, what, what's the biggest reason? Like, like when you do this, you obviously love it. You've been doing it for 21 years. What, what satisfaction do you get from it? What are some of the, what are the, some of the reasons why you love coming to work every day? Honestly, it sounds um, well, it sounds a little strange, maybe, uh, almost like I'm, you know, pandering, but <laughs> I, uh, I really love working with the people yeah. that are getting into these situations, you know, looking for, uh, their house that they're going to live in and put, move their family into. Yeah. And I give them a fuller picture of what they're actually getting into. So you deal with the numbers on the, you know, mm-hmm. transactions and the sales. And I, I don't care about that. Right. I, I care about, uh, giving them a livable space for their family that's yeah. safe. Yeah. And that's not going to uh, cost them even more numbers yeah. uh, than the house itself. Because as you said, they're not cheap. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what, in Montana, you know, every every state seems to be different. Um, what are some of the most common things that you run into on a house that a, that a buyer should, you know, beware of? What, what are some of the most common things you see out there in the arena? Most things that we see all throughout Montana that is most common is going to be water shedding. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, what people don't often understand is that the house is a, a, a collection of systems that all have to work together as a system, a larger mm-hmm. system, an aggregate system. And that's true with the, uh, the roof that is, as you said, nearing the uh, mm-hmm. end of its age or uh, the gutter system, the, the, the grading of the, of the uh, 
lot. And yeah. then, of yeah. course, the siding and trim and all that stuff, the ceiling of it, all of that has to work together. And then, of course, treating the foundation. Are, are you trying to say, Tim, that, that the gutter should not drain right into the crawl space on purpose? <laughs> 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 so what you're really trying to say yeah. is. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I mean, unless, you, you know, unless it goes right into some sort of like a jacuzzi that you've dug out, you know, down in there, you know, something like that. Yeah. No, I don't think yeah. that's We just want to make sure the sump pump works. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think that's going to pass. Either. Okay. I'm sorry. They, they <laughs> might have efficiency. Yeah. That's right. So, so the draining, cause I always, I always see, you know, a negative draining, you know, like the, the, the house is built, you know, in a hole in, in other words. Right. So well, if it doesn't start there, it, it, yeah. it ends up there. Yeah. Uh, people put flower beds around the house yeah. and, and a lot of times they'll put it right up against the siding or, uh, yeah. you know, right up underneath it. And so we get all kinds of siding, uh, will eventually deteriorate yeah. the moisture. Yeah. It does. So you see, I see a lot of, uh, um, I see a lot of things just like when I'm walking around houses, like that bottom one or two pieces of siding, if there's lots of shrubbery or whatever else seems more swollen than, than something else. And you know, yeah. the leaves get dew on them, the dew, the dew leaves are touching the siding and the siding just over time, just absorb stuff, you know, well, or the sprinklers hitting it, you know, like right, right outside of the house. Yeah. That always good. Wood siding is most common around here because it's yeah. cost effective and it's easy to put up. Right. Uh, the problem with that, uh, is, is not the siding itself, but, but that we don't take those things into account. Yeah. When we put I mean, Montana's got less humidity than most places too, but it, it does. It's fairly dry, but uh, but we make up for that yeah. with uh, our sprinkler washer or garden beds. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, all the twenty five feet of snow we get annually, or you know, right. or like the rain we've had for the last two weeks, which is which is good. So so what you're saying is you should call my wife right after the show, and you should be like, when Jason took out those thirty two lilac bushes that were pressed <laughs> up against the side of the house when we bought the funny farm, he he was actually doing a good thing. Well, there are other reasons to get rid of lilac. Oh, that right? yeah. <laughs> but yeah, were, and your well, sewer scope will tell you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it was like uh, it was like Little Shop of Horrors. Um, what uh, what kind of inspections uh, are, are most common? So someone gives you a call. So f- so first of all, they'd be f- referred to you many times by a real a local real estate agent. Um, I'm sure you get calls out of the blue as well. Um, I won't have you come down and actually do mine uh, because like we when we bought our house, we had mold, and thank gosh that we had a home inspection. I didn't know you at the time. Uh, we had a home inspection, and uh, you know there was mold throughout the attic and the crawl spaces and stuff like that. And I just want to make sure if that stuff, you know, would you mind coming down and having a look and we'll, we'll obviously take care of you. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, that would be great. I just, because if there's anything, I want to nip it in the bud. And I think that's really important that although you may not have bought your house, I don't think it's a bad idea whether you're renting or whether you're living there to do currently a, to just a, a, get a one done or like a partial one done. Please just come look around yeah. because you know, heck, I mean, you don't want it to get to a point where you're ready to go sell and there's a problem that costs 10 grand that you could have alleviated for 200 bucks. That's just it. The trick, yeah. the yeah. trick is your yeah. job is to find small problems that could eventually become yep. bigger problems. Yep. That's right. And, and for mold in particular, yeah. you, you know, because it's drier up here, as you said, it's mold is not as big a, an issue here as it yeah. is in other parts. People are moving in from other parts and have been for the last couple of years at an alarming rate. So yeah. we're getting a lot more mold test requests, but yeah. you know, there's a, different types of mold tests. There's the mold you can see, and then you of course can, uh, yeah. uh peel and stick the mold in your teenager's room (laughs) 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 we don't test closets (laughs) we don't test closets or or laundry baskets (laughs) here we go off (laughs) or their shoes but we do the air test in the the living space and we do pull a reference from the outside and then we do several uh, locations on the inside and that's for the mold you can't see that's just in the air Mm -hmm. The truth is, is that mold is everywhere. We're breathing it right now, but right. we're looking for unsafe levels, and then we pull one from the outside versus the inside yeah. so that we can get, see the difference. Just to compare. Last you, time I did mine, the mold was more outside than inside. I don't know how that happens. Weird. Yeah, I think they got it, like, reversed. Or you're, you're growing ERV. fungus. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I try to do all the time. <laughs> yeah. Do you have an ERV in your house? Like no, that? No, uh, no. no, we had lots of mice, though. Oh. It, it was just really weird. It just tested higher outside. I don't know, lots of pond, maybe all the ponds around that's it like, or something. Yeah. That's why you call it Funny Farm. Yeah, that's right. I know. <laughs> Everything's bass backwards at my place. It's like, it's like the Chevy Chase movie. Yeah. yeah. It's like oh. the money pit. Yeah. It's just like, it's oh, yeah. crazy that, weird. That, that's Tom Hanks. Sorry, Tom I'm Hanks, a different yeah. movie. I don't know. And, Shelly Long. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is it? So uh, what, when someone orders a home inspection, what are they, uh, I know there's like, what are some of the things that they most commonly order? Will they order like, uh, like uh, radon or uh, t- tell me a little bit about what, what kind of testing you do most of the time? Uh, radon almost always accompanies. Uh, okay. That, I think that's required, isn't it? Usually in the. No, it's not required, but, no. but it would be foolish not to get a radon test in right. Montana because Montana just has radon. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Just is what it is. And we're slightly above the, what the EPA calls an actionable level in the Missoula area, but mm-hmm. we've tested down the bitter at, in uh, up into the fifties. Oh wow! Which the actionable level is four, mm-hmm. uh, 
and we're you usually have around around six here. But uh, like I said, it's been in the 50s and down. Yeah, over four, and typically the buyers are asking for some sort of a radon passive or active uh, mitigation system. Do you install those two, or who do you refer that out to? Yeah, we uh, off, most often will refer to Murphy. Okay, Murphy. Yeah, Murphy. How, does, how does that work? The mitigation. Um, so what they do is they get a chainsaw. <laughs> and they, and they, yeah, and they just they just go right into the side of your house. They yeah. just make a vent. Just get a backhoe. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it depends on the construction of the house, really. Is it a slab foundation versus a crawl space or a basement? Yeah. And yeah. That changes the mitigation system that they put in. Oh, well, okay. To, to a degree, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes there's a piping. Sometimes there's a fan attached to the piping. Sometimes they put visqueen down with a pipe under it. Sometimes they yeah. have to saw through some part of the house or some part of the foundation. Or just to get airflow. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's a little tougher, I think, on a slab. I don't know where they'd have to. That's be kind of like you said, chainsaw. Right? Yeah, just chainsaw. I think a jackhammer and that would yeah. be, be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so uh, do you have any questions, Meredith? I know that you're I'm just kind of, I'm just like, oh, loud mouth over here going. Like, what are, what are some of the things that, you know, you work with a, a, a ton of uh, families when they're purchasing their home and you do a great job. What are some of the things that you see them asking or some concerns that, you know, sometimes the buyers have on your end? Um, well, I work with a lot of new families that are first-time buyers, do you treat first-time buyers a little more delicately than you would treat a, say, seasoned person? Good question. <laughs> that is a good one. In other words, do you scare the crap out of them? <laughs> <laughs> you just come in with all doom and gloom? Yeah. <laughs> Don't buy this up. No. In 21 years, there's only been one time where I actually I didn't tell the client. I talked to the realtor and said, you don't want to sell these people to this house. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? that's right. There's only one time in 21 years. Everything's fixable. That's our philosophy. And we can, and we like to work with we, uh, local contractors uh, that we've got relationships with, and we make sure that there's always an avenue to getting anything done. Yeah. Uh, but first time home buyers, we treat everybody like a first time home buyer until they tell us not to. Well, okay. Uh, my, yep. my first time home buying experience, uh, my, the, the inspector got in the crawl space and came out and he was messing with me. He, he come out, he come out and he's like, oh man, you got a spider problem. <laughs> like, you got a spider problem? He goes, yeah, there's spiders down there as big as my fist. <laughs> and I just, my face just turned white. I'm are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I think I did a multifamily in, uh, I think it was Corvallis and the crawl space had a, a tunnel carved into it. And the HVAC, the boilers and stuff were underneath in the crawl space, and it was completely moist. And the spider webs were so thick without a flashlight, you couldn't see 10 feet. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. What's the craziest thing you've seen on an inspection? Oh, I like that question. What's the craziest thing? Human skeletal remains. I was going to ask. I was going to ask. It was the ex-wife. <laughs> oh, oh, no. That's a, a tough that one because you're just, yeah, you're just not sure what to do at that point. <laughs> Scream. Uh, who do I call? Do I I'll just I'll slowly tell, back you know, out? I'm, I'm thinking, do I, am I supposed to call the police? The agent and the client were yeah. there. So I'm thinking, well, I'll let them know. And yeah. then it's on them. <laughs> yeah, but I think it was, a, it, was a, it was the last realtor that did not sell their house. <laughs> Just threw them under there, locked the door. It turned out to be nothing uh, that they were uh, alarmed about, that the uh, authorities okay. were alarmed about. Yeah. But, That's but it alarmed me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it did. <laughs> crawled around down there. Oh, my gosh. All right, Tim. Well, we're going to ask you some more of these, uh, these great questions here in just a few minutes. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Real Estate Revolution Radio right after this. Yeah. Hey, if you're even thinking of selling your home, well, you need to know all of your options. That's why there is one source that I look to for the best advice and the local real estate market. I'm talking about Jason Baker of Rise Realty, Montana. What's the latest news in real estate? Sean, the good news is when you have great marketing, what's happening in the market doesn't matter that much. That said, we're seeing rising interest rates that has removed approximately 30% of the buyers from the market, and that's going to continue. How does that impact sellers today? Simply put, this is the last chance to sell, I believe, for top dollar. Less buyers means less showings, less showings, less offers over asking price, and we can still help get you over asking price with our amazing marketing. All right, as always, thanks for the insight. He knows how to cut through all of the talk and to give you accurate information. So call the agent I recommend. Call Jason at 552-4443. That's 552-4443. Online, jasonbakerteam.com. That's jasonbakerteam.com. From listing your property to purchasing investments, Jason Baker has got you covered. Time for more of the Real Estate Revolution Show. Welcome back to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker. Jason, today we're talking home inspections with Tim. Yes. And uh, we just we just had some great questions from Meredith. Yes. Uh, and, and I do like the, the first time home buyer one. That was a good one. But the, the, the craziest thing you ever saw one. <laughs> <laughs> That's, um, what, what did we Human decide? skeletal <laughs> remains yeah. were found. That's right. I, I didn't. I, 
in the back of my head, I expected you to say that, but I didn't actually expect you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. The skeletal remains is much better than a decomposing body. Yes, right. that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it's crazy. So, it, it, so we're talking about home inspections, the importance of getting one, why a buyer should consider doing that, why sellers hate when buyers ask for that, uh-huh. and uh, and everything. But we're starting to see them, uh, you know, come back on the forefront where people are starting to ask for it. They're starting to get stuff on inspections paid for again. So there's a lot of ways in the changing market that buyers are winning. Those sellers need to be, you know, aware of the fact that it isn't what it was three months ago. There's going to be a large percentage of our real estate population who are uh, agent population. And I don't know if I get in trouble for saying this, but the fact, but, oh, well, I'm, I mean, I, I'm not politically uh-huh. correct as anybody knows. So off we go. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is there is still going to be people touting this amazing market after it changes. Yeah. Here at the Jason Baker team, we, we are in the trenches every day. So far, 75 times this year. Um, we've that's how many families we've helped so far buy or sell, which we're super grateful for. But the fact is, is we're in the arena clawing and pawn and scratching every single day. And we are seeing a major change happen in the real estate industry here uh, in the market and the sale prices and the amount of offers and everything else. And also the buyers are starting to get stuff on their inspection notices again. Yep. They're starting to order inspections again. This is all good to sign of a more healthy market. And, you know, a normalizing market is what we want. We want that steady three to five percent growth per year. It makes good people be able to stay here. Right. Versus right. getting right. taxed the hell out of here and, mm-hmm. and you know, not being able to afford it because there's so many good people that live here. You know, so a slowdown is welcome. Plus, we don't have to field 20 offers. I mean, right. t- talk about I'm surprised my admin haven't run up out of there. They probably do anyway because they work with me. But never mind when they're getting 20 <laughs> offers. Every house has to tunnel. do that, you know. God. But anyway, well, back to the inspection part of it. So we had I had some more. I mean, so do new homes, uh, Tim, have uh, uh, issues, too? Do you do some new homes? Every home has some. Yeah. And we do, actually, we've done quite a few new homes, mm-hmm. more so in the last couple of years than we do. Yeah. Uh, People find it hard to believe you actually order a home inspection on a new home. You're like, this thing's going to be great. The last two new homes that we ordered home inspections on are mold. What? One of them was, huh? like, One of them yeah, was yours, Meredith. Yeah, yeah, Melvin's house. How? Yeah. Well, that Do I love that guy, Meredith? I know, he's <laughs> Depending on what season they start building in, if they don't wrap things up tight enough. Yeah. Oh, I guess, yeah. 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 One well, rains before. on it, snows on it. You know, snow could be sitting on it for four months, and then it melts on it. You know, that kind of thing. And so. we do several of those inspections in places where they already have municipal building inspections, yeah. like Missoula or some of the some of the towns down mm-hmm. in Bitterroot. But we also get called out to other parts where they don't have municipal oversight. Uh, to do phase inspections and then a complete new home inspection at the end too, it's because uh, there's if you're in the state jurisdiction, mm-hmm. there isn't a residential building code enforcement program yeah. other than the initial electrical right. setup and the initial plumbing tie-in. Because just because they say an inspector from the county came out or the city came out doesn't mean that everything's okay. We look at very different things. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Which is really good. So protecting your investment is obviously a good idea. What, other, what, what else, Marta? If you're curious about anything else? I'm curious. Um, do you guys do meth tests? Do you see a lot of people requesting for meth testing? Yeah. The state DEQ, we've been in contact with them quite a bit lately. Uh, they are in the process of changing their policies on it. It was pretty loose before, and they're trying to tighten that up a little bit. They decided it uh, seems that they're not going to certify testers uh, apart from remediators. So we're going to have to go through the whole of it when they get that established. Yeah. But we've been established through, or we've been certified through third party to do the testing all along. And then we work with a local remediation company. So one of the things you can't do is the, the person who tests can't do the remediation because then it's conflict. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that, we, we've seen that now. There are people out here who do the testing and also the re- remediation. I can tell you without a doubt, categorically, even if maybe that's the wrong word. You know, I try to use big words and I fall flat. I was going to say, where's your thesaurus? Did you bring a thesaurus? Thesaurus? No, I don't even know what that is. I can't, I definitely can't spell it. So anyways, I'm a realtor for goodness sakes. Jeepers, creepers. But you know, the, but the fact of the matter is it's like, yeah, no wonder it came back hot every single time. And then we had, we had it retested on one or two occasions. I lost a client over it. He goes, I've never, ever, he goes, I'm, I'm 70 years old. Do you think I've done, you think I do that? I bought this house new. So, anyways, we got, you know. But well, I'm glad that the Montana DEQ is tightening up the standards. I think that's so smart. Some of the abaters have have been known to, and there hasn't been any enforcement uh, available for it, but have been yeah. known to just paint over it and cover it up. And that works for a few days. That works when you retest and you can say, look, now it's clean. Mm-hmm. But then it doesn't take very long for that to seep out. To seep out, out. yeah. 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 Uh, you can yeah. do the ta-da, look, comes, it's all fresh now. Comes with a buzz. <laughs> Tim, Tim, if anyone wanted to call you and ask you questions about this, how would they get a hold of you or, or email or anything like that? Yeah, well, Inspect Montana is inspectmt.com. Okay. Or uh, our inspection line is 406 241 
9464, and you can email our office at office at inspectmt.com. Okay, inspectmt.com if you want some more details on that. And uh, Jason, um, are you are you off now? Are you are you off? Are you are you are you I'm off leaving. the clock? I'm leaving tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, but but you can split. I'm never off the clock. Plus, there's nine people on the team who are way smarter than me. I'm just a loud mouth. All right. Good. Anyway, but yeah, you can reach them or me. You know, because my cell phone works down in Mexico. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. What are you doing yeah. right now? No, Jason? I know my wife is going to be like, put your phone down. We'll be like, no. <laughs> She'll be looking over there. I'll be hiding under the towel. But anyway, four zero six five five two four 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 three, or just Google Jason Baker team, and and uh, you'll find us. You can see all of our listings at jasonbakerteam.com. And thank you for listening today everybody as always if you missed any of our episodes you can find them on demand at newstalkkgvo.com jason until next week we'll see you soon yep